In this video, I'll be showing you how you can download and install SQL Server 2025 Express Edition. Now, as of recording this video, SQL Server 2025 is in preview mode, so you won't see it on the default download page. However, in the future, that will change. Now, to access the download, you want to use the link in the description of this video. Now, once you're on this website, you're going to select Download the Executable and then go ahead and open the executable file. Now here you need to choose your installation type. I typically use the download media option and then save it to my device. Now I already have the media downloaded. So what I'm going to do now is that I'm going to go to my downloads and open the ISO file. Then scroll down and open the setup exe file. Then on the installation center, you want to select install, then select new standalone installation once the checks are complete select next then you're going to select perform new installation of sql server 2025 then select next to continue now from the drop down is where you're going to select express and then select next accept the license terms and agreement and then select next and check add your extension and then select next here you want to install the database engine if you need to use additional features such as sql server replication then you can go ahead and install it, right? But I'm just gonna select next here. Now here is what I want you to pay attention to. Now when a lot of people are installing the Express Edition, they go ahead and just select next with the default named instance name. And when you're connecting to your SQL Server, you have to specify the instance name. However, if you're not using the default instance, which is MSQL Server, you can go ahead and select this option and it will change that slash express and then you can go ahead and connect without specifying the slash and the name of your instance however i'll be using a named instance and i'll be calling it ex2025 it will automatically update the instance id once you click in it then select next now here's where you can choose your startup type I'm going to be using manual because I don't want when my computer starts, database engine starts up with it. If you want to set your database collation, you can set it from the default tab, right? Go ahead and select next once you're satisfied with your changes. And here is where you're going to put your database engine configurations. So the first thing that you want to do is decide if you're going to enable mixed mode authentication. Now this is ideal if you're using local accounts to login, but if you're not using local SQL accounts to login, then the current and Windows authentication mode is fine. So I'm going to select add current user. If you want to change the directories where your files are stored, that is your database file, then you can change them from the data directory. However, for this test setup, the default is fine. However, in an organization, you want to ensure that you put them on a different drive. Right, so you want to separate your database files from your logs files and your backup directory. Now on the tempdb tab, you can specify the number of DB files. Now the number of files you have is dependent on the number of cores. However, for testing purposes, a single file is fine. And then you can adjust your growth rate. Now these are more advanced stuff, but for basic testing, the default is okay. Now an important option that you want to change is your memory. If you don't, SQL Server will eat up all your memory and then your PC becomes slow if you're using like your laptop. So you want to select recommended and specify a value. For the maximum amount of memory it will use for me, it is just 14 gigs there about. Now before you can select next, you have to ask the recommendation and then select next. And then select install to complete the installation. This will take about 5 to 10 minutes to complete depending on the speed of your computer. Now the installation has been completed, so you can go ahead and select close. Now there are two important things that you need to note. If you are connecting from a remote server, you need to allow the firewall rule over port 1433 and you need to enable TCP IP for your SQL Server instance. So let's enable the TCP IP by launching the configuration manager. Now once you're in the configuration manager, you need to go to the SQL Server Network configuration. Then here I have the instance that I just installed. Then you need to enable TCP IP, select OK, and then go ahead and restart your service if it's running. The next thing you want to do is enable firewall. So you're going to search for firewall, select firewall and network protection, then select advanced settings, 
minus this window and here you want to add an inbound rule to your server so you're going to select new select port and then select next specify the port that you want to enable so the default port is 1433 then select next allow connections select next here sql express and the description then select finish and once you complete all those steps once you enable those steps you'll be able to successfully launch a remote connection to your sql server instance now guys have an excellent course in sql server database administration on udemy you can go ahead and check it out the link will be in the description of this video if you found this video helpful please don't don't forget to leave a like or leave a comment so that's it for now Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.